All right, folks, what happened to mortgage rates today? Well, what happened to the markets today is really the big question. Um, and here's your answer right here. Good old j Powell. I mean, nobody exerts excitement quite like he does. I don't know if that worked or not. I'm having all kinds of issues going on over here. Let me get myself out of the way. We're going to jump right into this today. Look, there isn't a whole bunch of crazy stuff going on today. Um, but we, we, we're, we're learning, we're watching the market consistently, you know, trying to figure out where we're at. I had three deals that I thought were going to get into escrow this week. Sounded good. Speaking to the listing agents, almost every situation getting beat out by cash offers. And, um, one of the things that I discussed in, I actually have a fellow YouTuber. He's an agent, Dan Parker. Um, he does the best life San Diego. So we did one here recently with this yesterday, um, talking about the real estate market. Thought it was pretty good. Thought it was pretty good worth, uh, worth checking out. So I'll put that link in the description if you want to check it out. Um, hear his thoughts, hear my thoughts. And it's always so much easier to be a guest than it is to, to host something like this. Um, but I think we did good and I think it's worth checking out. But essentially what happened today with mortgage rates, and we're going to look at mortgage rates today. We are going to look at mortgage rates today. We're going to look at bonds here. You can see what's been happening. I mean, what's been happening is pretty clear a massive downtrend and you know this is what it is this is bad so you know mortgage bonds go lower that means that mortgage rates go higher right that's the inverse relationship that that they have so we want to see something happen here we want to see some sort of movement higher the only good news about today is we did stay right on this floor of support i mean we're right on it but at one point today, we were down almost 70 basis points, I think 68 or, or 69 basis points, only finished the day down 34. So rates did get worse today. Um, and it, it, it is what it is. But it could have been worse. It could have been worse, especially after Powell came in. And you know he when he said this, now this was good for mortgage bonds. When this came out, mortgage bonds started to come back. And the stock market is the one that really took the ding because stocks were, you know, flat ish today, but it was pretty much green across the board. And then we had a day where it's like, okay, sell off. It's time to sell off because Powell's talking about 50 basis points. This is all just a drop of water in the ocean, by the way. It's hysterical to me that this causes any action to take place. It really is because 50 basis points is nothing. It really isn't. Uh, but look at the movement. Look at what's going on. We're talking about a few things here. Um, I, I, you know, we really need to hold this range um, for. We just need a reprieve for a little while. We've gotten one here for over a week. We've been in this range. If we can just stay here, if we can get some good news somehow tomorrow, if the market can shrug this off, if we can get a little green candle, kind of get back to the top of this range, so we have some room um, for normalcy, um, and AKA bond prices going down. That would be good. The longer we can stay in that range, the better. I don't think we're forming a bottom. I don't think that's what's happening. I don't think that will happen until we start to see, you know, the Fed actually sell these bonds. I think that will be the liquidity that big international money funds want to come in and purchase and not have to run the price up in order to get big uh, amounts of these bonds once they're yielding, you know, four and a half, five and a half, six percent. That'd be steel, right? You'd want to pull the trigger on that cash money. <laughs> By the way, I've added some more buttons from the radio days. All these buttons, all these sound effects come from my radio show from back in the day. They're the exact same sound effects that I used to use back then. And I love them all. And I added four new ones today. So get, you're going to hear these. Yeah. And this one. Hated it. This one. And one of my favorite ones of all time. It is your destiny. <laughs> So we're gonna have some fun. I add some new, some new buttons. We're gonna talk about real estate. There's an article here that we'll discuss as well from Forbes. Um, this one was like, oh, what the real estate, um, the real reason house prices are skyrocketing, what the real estate industry won't tell you. I guess I'm not considered to be part of the real estate industry because this is what I've been saying forever. Um, what the real estate industry won't tell you conveniently ignores a part of their supply equation. What? That's not true. Um, and that's a so it's a very simplistic way to do it um, to to discuss it. But uh, basically what they're saying is investors are buying up houses, okay? Um, because investors bought up so many houses, they pull down supply. Yeah, we've been saying that for quite some time. 
And when we say investors, we're not just talking about mom and pop investors. We're talking about major, enormous hedge, international money funds, big, 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 big buyers, big buyers that are buying real estate to rent it out. That's a trend that probably isn't going to stop anytime soon. So we're going to take a look at mortgage rates. Um, we're going to, there was one other article I want to show you. The price of a home sold in March set a new record as inventory dwindled and sales fell. So you've heard a lot of negative stuff about sentiment in the real estate space right now. A lot of negative stuff about sentiment. And I'm about to show you why it's, uh, we're kind of in a situation where rates are, are starting to have an impact, let's call it. Let's see, mortgage 30 US. We're gonna pull up average mortgage rate here, St. Louis Fed. Let's zoom this in quite a bit. I don't know if we got today's data in here yet. So we're gonna find out live. Yeah, we did. Okay, so last week, we hit 5% for the first time in a very long time. We saw 5%. We didn't quite get back to get up to 5% in early 2019 over here. The highest we saw was 4.94. So we hadn't seen 5% in a long time. And last week we had an average mortgage rate, the average mortgage rate for a fixed rate mortgage, fixed rate mortgages. This includes points. This includes all credit scores. This includes everything. So it's a total mash hit 5% exactly last week and just got the data in today, 5.11. You know what's interesting about 5.11? I'll show you. That's really interesting. So the first reading of the year, or essentially what would have been the first reading of the year, 3.11. So we're now up 2%. Mortgage rates are up 2% Damn! since the beginning of the year. That's less than four months. Mortgage rates are up two full percentos. So um, I've done some calculating on this. I've chronicled this. I've explained this. It's it's definitely causing people to be more budgetarily conscious. It is definitely causing some buyers to exit stage left. A lot of buyers just simply aren't don't care. They're just happy to get a house. That's what a supply crisis will do to you. And um, I don't know if it wasn't yesterday. I think it was the day before. You know, I did the video where I went. We went back in time and I showed you that you know real estate values continue to go up even through the crisis in. The late seventies, early eighties, when when rates, which had been, you know, kind of steady here for a long time, and they got up to the ten range, they spiked up to eighteen percent through that whole period, real estate values just slowly climbed. It didn't have an impact. And so when we zoom in here today, we're seeing rates get up. Now we're kind of setting a new um what was a decade long high. I mean, how long has it been since rates were at five percent? Let's look at this. Okay, the last time we touched 5%, just barely touched it in February of 2011. So it's been 11 years, 11 years since we've seen rates, the average rate this high at 5.11. So now that's the average rate. Now the reason I'm going to keep, I'm going to post this link again, and I think you should keep this link saved in your favorites. I honestly do, because this is a great way to get an understanding of what rates are as a whole. Now it's trailing, it's trailing data. So when rates are getting worse, it's gonna be a little bit lower than what it is, but people can look at this and go, okay, if the average is 5.11%, then you know, if my credit scores are lower, if my situation isn't quite as good, maybe I'm paying you know, up to three quarters of a percent higher than that, half a percent, three quarters of a percent, let's say. And if my situation's really good, maybe I'm paying three quarters of a percent or half a percent less than that. And that's kind of the litmus for where are rates exactly. And let's go through and do some calculations here today, right now. And I will save you as much of the lag as I can. I should have been more prepared for this. I'm sorry. I should have had this already set up and logged in. So apologize for that. But what are you going to do? is what it is. Let's start with VA. You know, I'm a VA home loan specialist. In fact, let's go ahead and get some disclosures on the, on the board here. Uh, VA home loan specialist, NMLS 155010. We're going to start off with conforming balance. Give me a call, shoot me a text, send me an email if you want to buy or refi. 
there are people still refinancing. It is happening. We use 780 as the credit score here. We used detached units for pricing as well. And there are no lender fees associated with the rates you're about to see. So we're going to start conforming balance. So under 647, 200. And we use 600,000 for this. Let's have a look, see where this is at. 780 credit score, VA. We're going to start with VA. So 4.5%. And CMG is just leaps and bounds. I mean, look at that. My word. It's almost worth putting up with their BS Hated it. for that kind of rate. And they do provide some BS. No offense, but if you're going with CMG, you definitely need a 30-day escrow. Otherwise, it is your destiny to be very unhappy. All right. So for even a 4.375 for 841 bucks, that is just by far and away. Let's look at, let's say we have a quick close situation. I'm curious about this myself. Quick close situation going United Wholesale. How far off is United Wholesale? 4.75. So the difference there is 4.75. Let's see if I can make this bigger for you. 4.75 with a $1,300 lender credit versus 4.5 with a $2,500 lender credit. That's where it's interesting and it's nice to be a broker. It's really, really nice because you have options. Hey, we got a 30 day escrow. Cool. We can go to CMG. It's a squeaky clean file. There's nothing to worry about. We'll just, we'll fight the fight for the rate. Hey, we got a 15 day close. Okay, guys, we're going to UWM. We're going United Wholesale here. We have a quick close situation. That's the direction to go. So being a broker, a lot of times is, you know, about knowing what the different banks are capable of, what you're going to be dealing with with them, what kind of borrower do you have, and what kind of situation are you in? How quickly do you need to perform? Those things all kind of factor in. Um, so that one's interesting. Okay. So that's VA conforming. We're going to call that 4.75. No slight to CMG. They definitely are a good option. Um, they're a good bank. They are. Guys, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to shit on CMG. I'm really not. Um, they just annoyed me with one recently. So I'm a little buttered. But don't you worry. We got it done. And we got it done almost on time, even though they threw us a big curveball. Okay, so now we're going above 647, 200. We're 700,000 here. VA, fixed rates. And what I'm going to do on this one is I'm also going to check the arm. So we saw 4.75 fixed. Now look at United Wholesale jumping in there way ahead of everybody. Where's CMG? Where'd they go? Wow, look at that. Way down here, way off. So clearly CMG just wants the conforming balance loans. They were so much better priced than everybody else. And you'll see our comp is pretty much the same on all these. It's 150. Um, United Wholesale here, 4.875 on the high balance. 4.875. So nearing 5% for even VA. Nearing 5% for VA. I'm scared to pull the conventional rates here in a second. I'm scared. Let's look at the arm. Maybe we'll get some love there. I checked the arms earlier this week and there wasn't really a whole lot to it. So you can do a five-year arm with VA. I think it was Caliber who's pricing best on this. Let's see if it's still them. No products matching. Wow. Why? G Caliber, nobody likes it. Okay, here we go. Five, yeah. So... I mean, you don't have a par rate. You almost have a par rate, 4.65. That just kind of doesn't make sense. I mean, it's close to making sense. It's a quarter percent, you know, you could look at an arm. I think half a percent is a no-brainer. quarter percent is as low as I would start looking at it. This isn't quite a quarter of a percent better. So to me, this just doesn't make, make sense yet. Um, you know, the arms, we've got to keep an eye on them. I mean, some cases they're going to make sense. We're going to check um, conventional next, and then we'll do FHA. And we'll check the arms there too. We'll just kind of see. So let's go fixed for conventional. And we're going to do right here. Let's do this. We're going to do 600,000. Purchase price, which is going to give us a 570 loan amount. So I always do minimum down payments. So yes, rates can be better. 
if you have higher down payments, for sure, rates can be better. If you're putting 40% down and stuff like that, your rate's going to be better. So I always do the minimum ones. I'm just trying to, I'm not trying to just show you a perfect scenario. I'm trying to show you a very realistic and normal scenario here. Let's take a look. Fixed rate conforming balance, conventional loan. Yeah, so we have this bank, CIT, um, that is just crushing everybody. I mean, look at that. That is almost, that is well over 150, 160, 180 basis points better. Absolute smoking everybody. Have not sent a loan to them yet. So I'm going to take them out of the equation for a minute because I don't want to sit here and quote a rate with a bank that I haven't done a loan with yet. Let's see how they do. Let's see that first. It looks like just from a, a standpoint of rate, Loan Depot's coming in best here, 5.25%, okay, with a, with a decent lender credit there. Let's see what happens if we go arm on this thing. I just want to see what happens. So five and a quarter. Starting to see some confluence here between the VA and the conventional. Really interesting. Let's go arm. And I'm going to look specifically at the seven-year arm. And the reason for that is because the seven-year arm doesn't require, you can actually qualify off of the starting rate with a seven-year arm on a conventional loan. So you don't have to qualify using um, the higher rate, the fully indexed rate or the rate plus 2%. It looks like CMG has got the best deal here. And yeah, it's just, it's just not quite piecing up. So we're going to stay away from the arms now for the rest of today. They're just not there. They're not there. We had a moment there where arms were kind of there, and I got a couple of them locked in. They're just kind of not there at the moment. Now let's go high balance. Okay, 800000 purchase price. Let's get this loan amount in here. Let's see. What is that going to be? 760 5% down. Conventional. Let's look at high balance conventional. Hold your breath. Hold it. Don't expect anything good. Yikes. High fives, guys. That's where we're at. High Hated fives. Hated it. High fives. Wow. And not the good kind. Not the good kind of high fives. Flagstar is okay. Again, I wouldn't send anything there in a hurry. Um, JMac could could be a good place to go. Home Point is amazing. If you have a chance to send them to Home Point, they're really good. Very similar to UWM. Look at that rate sheet. My word. Really a 5.875 for uh, for home point. Wow. So we're high fives, guys. So when we look at this, so remember the average rate that came out today is through last week. So this number we were looking at earlier, so I can get on there, 5.11%. That is definitely going higher. Definitely going higher next week. Um, it only went up, what, 0.11% week over week. So <laughs> this number, which came out today, represents uh, mortgages that closed through last week, which means loans that were locked like five weeks ago. That's the thing you got to remember about this trailing data. That stuff was locked five weeks ago, probably four to five weeks ago. And we've seen consistent raising, rising rates since. So this average here has got a little ways to go. It's got a little ways to go. And we're going to get to my prediction of 6.5% before long here, guys, just based on what we're seeing here. That's high balance conventional. Yikes. I mean, at some point, that has got to slow buyers down. It just hasn't happened yet. I mean, you think it's got to slow. I guess it has slowed them down. It hasn't affected the market yet. You feel like it has to, but it just, it just hasn't. And it might not. We can't sit here and think that it will just because it's logical. History tells us it won't. And the data so far tells us it's not. So we just have to be level-headed here. All right, now we're going to do FHA. So let's go FHA, conforming balance. See what that looks like. Expecting it to be similar to VA. Which we had a good option. We had the CMG option at 4.5. UWM option was at 4.75. And here you go again. CMG just far and away. GMAX in there. Uh, that's a good one. 
United Wholesale is not too far off either from that 4.5% range. So you've got good options there. Um, I wonder, does this scale down? Almost. I mean, you get, you know, for 854 bucks, you get four and three eights here. So if you got some time, you could go with CMG. And if you had to go quickly with UWM, you'd be all right. Now let's take a look at high balance FHA. So 3.5%, so 3%, 24,000, 74, 28, 772. I'm going to memorize this one of these days. There it is. Okay, so minimum purchase, minimum down payment again uh, for FHA purchase, high balance above the 647, 200 loan amount. Yeah. My brother Anthony Ramirez on here, also a great lender. Um, when was my guess to be at six? August? Yeah, I know. I, I'm looking at my prediction six and a half by the end of the year and going, huh, it might be there next week. I mean, that's so it's the, it's the rate of the ascent that I'm paying close attention to right now. So FHA, um, high balance here. Flagstar seems to be wanting that paper. Look at that. 4.65 gets you, you got 35 basis points of credit, $2,800 lender credit there. Caliber, United Wholesale. Let's see how far. United Wholesale is about 100 basis points off Flagstar. And they're worth every penny. Uh, 4.75 there. Not too bad for 526 bucks. I'd take that. I would take that. Check, please. Just for the experience alone. UWM is so much better. So that just kind of gives us a landscape of, you know, VA, um, mid to high fours, FHA, mid to high fours, <clears throat> just kind of across all loan amounts, conventional, mid to high fives. And that's kind of where, where we're at. And when you look at the average statistics, it's factoring all these different programs in. It's not factoring in hard money or anything like that. So you're getting, you know, traditionally government backed like financing. Um, but it's definitely going higher than 5.11 next week and probably 5.2 or even 5.3. It's definitely going up. This is not encouraging in any way, shape or form. Um, I would still highly recommend locking immediately. As soon as you have the opportunity, do that. If you want to know, Hey, what does this look like for me? Um, you can submit your scenario to me anytime via email, text, whatever. Loan amount, purchase price, or home value. If it's a refi, credit score, whether it's condo detached. Give me that information. I'll pull something like this up for you, and then I'll send you the pricing. Hey, here, I'll actually take a screenshot just right here. This is what I literally what I do all day long is take screenshots of stuff like this. Boom, send it to you, and you can see what your situation looks like. So that's what submit your scenario is all about. Um, I do think that, you know, pal coming out and saying something today was not, is not necessarily good for the stock market. Um, and we, we tend to keep seeing this correlation. And this is the one thing that kind of concerns me the most right now is the correlation between red days in stocks and red days in bonds. That's not good. There should be a flow of money from one to the other. What could really like catapult this quickly in a bad way would be a, cap a full system-wide capitulation event. There are people who are talking about uh, an everything bubble bursting, which I don't think is, is happening, but there are people talking about it. There could be more than one market that melts down. Stocks seem to be the most prime market of them all to melt down, but also has the most protection. Think about all the lawmakers who are long stocks right now. We've only found one lawmaker, one who has reported actually shorting the stock market. Although I do think at the end of this quarter, um, we'll see more of that. Stocks are the, are the weakest link I think right now um, from a traditional investment class. A lot of people don't have um, exposure to bonds anymore, but a lot of people do and don't know it. And so I think at this point in time, the smartest thing you can do is be aware of what you're invested in. Like, what do you actually own? Do you know what you own? What's in your mutual funds? What, ex what exposure do you have to bond portfolios? Um, what kind of bonds? You're going to want to know that stuff. Um, the bond market, the stock market, both to me seem extremely fragile at the moment. I think by, by far, 
real estate is the strongest. And it seems like there's this huge distraction that's being created and sort of propagated about, oh, how the real estate market is weak and the real estate market should crash. And it's the strongest of them all. I mean, there's no way in the world, no way, it is not possible for real estate to crash and the stock market to run. Not possible. So, but it is entirely possible. In fact, probable and logical that the stock market takes a hit and real estate gets to benefit from that. That I think is a lot more likely, a lot more possible, a lot more probable. But there's, there's, there's no chance that a real estate market in this environment is going to just crash on its own, <laughs> even with rates going up. <laughs> it may decrease you know, some of the demand, but the demand that we have right now is off the charts. Off the charts. So will it just completely nullify it altogether? I don't think so. Look at all the transactions that are happening in cash. The three that I lost this week that we thought we had, all of them were lost to cash. So people who are buying in cash... They don't care what the interest rates are. People who are cash buyers, they love rates going up. Oh, makes them so happy. You seen Meet Kevin's tweets lately? He's one of those guys, a lurker, I call him. These are people who sit around, they hope that, you know, home values crash so they can swoop in with their millions and buy a bunch of properties. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, but, you know, these, these are the people who are out there saying the market's going to crash, the market's going to crash, the market's going to crash. And you go, wait a minute, you have a direct benefit. You are predicting that. You are hoping for that. So obviously you're looking for data that correlates to that. For me, I just want to know the truth. Look, yeah, I, I'm invested in the real estate uh, business, in real estate heavily. I definitely am. But uh, I want to know the truth. I'm interested in the truth. If it is gonna it's gonna be something that gets really bad, I'm gonna want to know that for the decisions I have to make, right? So I'm looking at this stuff strictly from that perspective. I'll share my information, share my thoughts. But that's what I'm looking at it for. So if I saw something I didn't like here, I'd be the first one to tell you. I tell you all the time. I don't like the way this looks. I told you rates were gonna get bad long before anyone else was talking about it. Long before it was mainstream news. I mean, we've been talking about this for a long time. Look at this trend. Look at this. How awful is that? Just off the cliff. We talk about catching the falling knife. This is what we're talking about. This is the falling knife right here. At what point does that thing get some sort of support? At what point does that thing start to level off? It's pretty ugly right now. It's pretty ugly right now. And I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to just like pump you up un- uh, without information. I'm not trying to just blindly. All you know, we want to do is pump you up. Not what I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to sit here and say, oh, this is the best time to buy real estate of all time. Best time to buy real estate was 20 years ago. It'll always be the case. Um, but you, you continue to see these articles that are sort of negative. You always have to read them. What's actually in there, it's usually pretty benign comparison to the headline. Got to read them. There's certain things you can't avoid, like actual numbers. Price of a home sold in March set a new record. Sorry, I didn't finish my thoughts on this earlier. We'll go, we'll go through this right now to get myself out of the way. So price of a home sold in March. Okay, now it's April. So homes that sold in March, the rates were locked in February. Where's February? February is in this area, okay? That gives you some idea. So this is where bonds were. Rates have gotten so much worse since then. So we, we, have to, we have to look at both sides of this coin. You can't just look at this and go, okay, well, the higher rates clearly don't have an, uh, any effect on the market. No, we can't just assume that. We have to keep looking. We have to keep tracking. Because rates weren't this high back in February when those loans that closed in March were getting locked. Rates were much, much better. So we have to continue to watch what happens month after month and know that this data is lagging. We know it's lagging. But I can tell you from boots on the street, 
I'm in the weeds. It's still hard to get a house. It's still hard to get a house. So whatever you do, be calculated. Be smart about it. Know what you're getting into. Be prepared. Understand what's happening in the market. Get yourself some good advice. Call me, text me if you need me. Email me. I'll be here for you. All right. Have a great day, guys. I'll put these links in the description and I will see you soon.